Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is going to be a second attempt at the Retreating Blade stall demo. Uh, the first one I did, there was some audio issues, and I think I've worked that out, so hopefully this one will turn out better. Um, so basically we're going to do uh, a brief description on the ground, and then I'm going to do a demonstration in the air of what it actually looks like. Uh, you know, to get all the legal uh, caveats out of the way, you know, this is not a flight lesson, you know, I'm not trying to give you uh, information on using a real aircraft. This is just for uh, information purposes only. So now that we've got all that fun stuff out of the way, basically it's, uh, especially at a lower speed like this, it's really easy to uh, see the, uh, the concept uh, behind the problem, if you will. And as we're looking from this side of the helicopter, if you can imagine the helicopter in forward flight, you can see that this side of the disc, the uh, rotor blade, is actually traveling in the same direction as the helicopter. So, generally speaking, you know, there's no real issue there. Um, the problem arises on the retreating side, and it gets that name, simply because, as you can see, it uh, travels in the opposite direction. So it's actually traveling uh, counter to the uh, forward motion of the helicopter. Now, even in normal flight, in low speeds to, uh, you know, low upper speed, you still have this problem, and most of that is mitigated um, in the actual mechanics of the rotor itself, as well as the fact that, uh, you know, that's also why you don't see a lot of rigid rotor designs, is because that hinge and that give in the flap on the uh, blade allows it to, you know, rise on one side and to dip on the other. And, you know, if you can create a balance with that, then it gives you more or less level flight. The problem arises when you get to a certain speed to where this side um, can no longer cope with that and you end up with a stall which means you're going to lose lift on this side of the rotor disc and you're going to continue to generate lift on this side of the rotor disc and the helicopter will violently roll towards the retreating side. So in this case from a forward view, you know, this side is going to rise, this side is going to dip and this is all going to happen you know, basically at 180 knots, which means you have, you know, basically a snowball's chance in hell of surviving that. Um, I would say out of a hundred times that I've actually tried this in the simulator, uh, I've actually recovered maybe twice, and one of those two times probably was still fatal, uh, considering how hard I hit the ground once I did recover. So it's, it's not something you want to really play around with a lot, you know, even in a simulator, let alone uh, an integral helicopter. Now that we're back on the inside here. Yeah, and you can see you have two actual speeds marked here, and generally speaking, the first one is going to be your cruise or your general max, uh, and that will be a broken or a uh, stripe line. It's right here that you've got to watch out for, and that is your actual never exceed or your max. And if you get close to that, and especially if you go a little bit over that, you're going to end up running into a retreating blade stall. And we're going to intentionally uh, fly the helicopter into that condition, just so I'll give you an example of what it actually looks like. And I'm also going to try to recover from it. But as I said, that's a very, very complicated uh, maneuver. Uh, you have a very limited time to react and you know you have a lot of inertia built up there going those kind of speeds so even when you do drop complete neutral um, on your angle of attack that does not mean the rotor is just going to instantaneously you know slow down to a, a, a regular speed and it doesn't mean the helicopter is going to uh, you know slow down to a regular speed especially considering that once you go into that role, you're already in a compromised position. You know, you're no longer really in a safe um, orientation, I think is what I'm looking for here. 
you know, so the aircraft is already at a disadvantage because you're in a pretty steep bank, uh, probably a steep bank with an axle rotation towards the direction of the roll. So a lot of things could go wrong, but hopefully we'll try to recover from it. And if you're curious, we're going to be flying from the uh, Dunakesi area, which is LHDK. Uh, I like this area because it has a lot of open field, which uh, if we have to do a pretty hard touchdown, uh, that can work to our advantage if we need to skid for a little while. So, like I said, you know, this really is not important uh, for this demonstration. We need to be looking at this uh, second red mark right here. I believe that it, we, we should be pretty stable, even right up to the point of uh, uh, getting the needle inside that red mark. But it's going to be just a hair over, and you'll see how just quickly and violently the helicopter goes from, you know, what seems like completely normal controlled flight to a disaster, you know, in a, in a split second. I actually want to fly out past this tree line uh, to try to gain some altitude, and then I'll J-turn and come back. even in a you know helicopter that's as agile as the AS350 is I may still need to be in a slight dive even to get to that speed so and also the recovery process the uh, you know the more altitude you have uh, that'll buy you a little bit of time There you go guys, so like I said, it is very hard to recover, but hopefully that illustrates just how quickly and how violently that reaction is. Um, you know, I'm not the best in the world at explaining things, but I hope that gives you a basic understanding of both, uh, A, you know, what causes the problem, uh, you know, how it actually works, the uh, physics behind it, and B, uh, a clear reason why you should not take it lightly and take that very very seriously and pay attention to what the manufacturer recommends as far as the maximum um, speeds you know and try to stay as far away from those as you can uh, if at all possible so thanks for watching uh, I'll leave a link in the description for the helicopter and the scenery and uh, until next time I'll see you guys later